uh, Bhaskar is a trustee in uh, Gita Krishnamurti Trust involved in fundraising strategy and development of uh, Gita Krishnamurti Vidyalaya School for Unprivileged People. He was also a giving manager for India and the APJ uh, and uh, that uh, corporate CSR in Dell. And he was an uh, executive director, Opportunity Network for uh, Disabled in Vadwani Foundation. Uh, he's, he's keen in social service. So he left his job and started, uh, and he, uh, you know, he started this initiative. He is part of this initiative as a trustee, fundraiser, volunteer, and, uh, and he's also board member in different organization. So today he's going to uh, speak about how to leverage corporate CSR for grants. So corporate CSR has been such a, I would say an enigma word or, you know, it's kind of such a things which people from nonprofit are often trying to solve as you know, how to crack this and you know, how to make the most of it. So he's going to give a few tips or, you know, going to speak about that. So welcome you, um, Bhaskar and uh, over to you. And uh, I request all the participants to go mute and then uh, off your video. And if you have any queries, you can put it in the chat window and uh, then we can start off. Over to you, Bhaskar. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chitranjali. Uh, I, you know, uh, I'm going to be speaking using a, a set of slides that I kind of just put together. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that part I, you know, use to bring out some thoughts for discussions uh, sure, sure. You know, towards the end. So I'm just going to share that uh, right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'll... Uh, and then I'll go to basically, sorry, um, what I should be doing is, so can everybody see it? Uh, one second, I probably will share the desktop itself. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Just give me a second. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, is it visible? Bhaskar, it's visible. We can see the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, as uh, Chitranjali said, you know, I have been involved kind of in both sides of the table, as uh, as you may say. Uh, from I've been associated with a couple of nonprofits. One of them, I still continue to be associated as a, as a trustee. And then I've been in grant making roles, uh, one at a foundation, which is the Vadhwani Foundation. And for the last three years or so till uh, till a couple of months ago, uh, as handling the CSR uh, portfolio for Dell in India and some of the APJ countries. So based on that experience, I have put together uh, some points here. Uh, I, I thought I'd start uh, not knowing completely the background of uh, all of you change makers uh, here. I thought I'll just uh, talk about some general things related to the topic, which is, you know, you know, what are the different sources of funds and nonprofits that go into the corporate CSR landscape. Uh, look at my experience of what Dell and some of the other folks that uh, I've interacted with in the industry uh, look at from a corporate CSR implementation perspective, some broad, uh, you know, funding do's and don'ts, and then some tips uh, that can, uh, you know, help one tap uh, corporate CSR funds. Uh, so that's that's broadly what I wanted to cover. So a lot of nonprofits, and you know, when they start out, uh, at least we did that with uh, the Gita Krishnamurti Trust. We set up a, we set up a, a, you know, few of us set up a tr uh, endowment, and then we, the source of funds was essentially family, friends, uh, and a few H and I's. Um, one could use crowdsourcing, uh, you know, using sites, uh, uh, which, which, you know, for specific pr projects, specific campaigns, both individuals and nonprofits uh, can use these uh, sites for uh, campaigns. Uh, and then, of course, there are these global foundations or even Indian foundations. You know, the the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is one the, the biggest and best known. And in India, the Azim Premji Philanthropic Initiative, they're all uh, giving uh, out funds. There are also international agencies that one can tap, UN, World Bank. One of the nonprofits that I was a trustee of in the past got some funding from World Bank for a very specific program. 
uh, and they continue to get that uh, over a period of time. As uh, Rajesh also mentioned, uh, I mean, um, you know, in a, in a slightly different context, but you know, one also ha can get funding uh, from various government agencies that are earmarking funds for uh, development activities, either from the center, state, or sometimes the local, you know, MLAs, MPs, everybody has uh, uh, some uh, funds earmarked for development activities. Um, the the other another source is aggregators. That means these are uh, you know uh, organizations where one can enlist in, and then you know they they go out using that list of organizations that can be working in any sector in the in the nonprofit space and talk to multiple corporates who who may be not wanting to look for the nonprofits themselves, but go through these aggregators and then channel their funds through these aggregators. Uh, to the nonprofits, right? One can also, of course, partner with other NGOs. NGOs, I mean, another NGO that I've been associated with in Bangalore actually supports. It's based out of Bangalore, but for the work that they do, they actually fund some of the real grassroots, um, you know, uh, NGOs that are in far-flung, remote areas of the uh, of the state uh, that are doing work in line with what uh, you know their their vision and mission is. And of course, corporates. I've highlighted that in blue because that's really what our uh, focus is, uh, you know, in this session, right? Um, I, I mean, I could take questions at the end, or uh, uh, Chitranjali, is that the format? Or I could take questions as they as they come along as well. But either anything way, is okay. I mean, if you're okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. Along? I'm comfortable with uh, either. Sometimes, okay. uh, you know, people, you know. Uh, as part of the thought process, people may want to ask something immediately and may not remember towards the end. Sure, so sure. I'm fine with uh, I'm fine with either. Uh, okay, so, okay. Then let so, if anybody has any queries or as yeah, I'll just you... pause for a few seconds at the end of every slide. Of course, yeah. uh, you know we we can have a separate uh, additional separate Q and A towards the end as well. Sure. Yeah. Right? So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess, uh, like I mentioned, a lot of it uh, is more uh, in the beginning is more generic, and I, I'm sure uh, a lot of you, if not all of you, are already uh, you know uh, aware of this. So within the corporate, of course, the corporate CSR. There have been corporates in India that have been uh, you know working on CSR projects for a real long time. For example, Dell um, celebrated 10 years of giving grants in India in 2017 that means they started giving grants in 2007 much before uh, you know the csr act came into being however the act which became effective from the financial year 14 15 uh, within that act you know these are the sections and the schedule uh, you know which basically helped increase the rigor and size of the corporate csr spend that means a uh, you know, corporates that met the criteria that's defined in the act, which were not spending, were now almost mandated to spend or give very detailed explanation of why they were not spending. And also at the end of the financial year, the act mandated that everybody report how they spent the money, what kind of projects, what progress. So it brought in a certain uh, rigor, which was, uh, you know, uh, monitored externally, which was not there before the act came into being. So based on, so, you know, there's data for the first three years of the act that is available on this government site. Um, based on that data, uh, you know, it looks like the size of this corporate CSR is about 15,000 companies. Uh, that's, you know, 15 to 16,000 companies are required to spend like i said and i'll touch upon that a little later also even today there are companies that don't necessarily come under the uh, csr mandate but are uh, you know are wanting to give back uh, you know once uh, once they get going or even they get started um, the spend expected across these companies uh, you know is is between 10000 to 15000 crore so that's you know that's the kind of spend that has, I cannot say come into the market, but has become visible uh, because several of these were probably spending even before the uh, act came into being. Based on the data on the site, the approximate three-year spend 
uh, is about 28,000 crores. So that's the kind of money that's been spent on CSR projects programs uh, over the last three years. Um, and these have been spent across, uh, you know, it varies from year to year, but for the year 15, 16, uh, it was uh, spent across 17,000 projects. There's a nice graphic on the site. People haven't seen it, but people are looking to understand where the uh, CSR spend is happening. I mean, there is uh, there, there's a bunch of uh, graphics on the site that one should look up. Of course, the the caveat in this is the top ten companies account for one third of uh, the CSR spend, and the top twenty is almost forty five percent. So you see, you know, so a large bulk of this funding is done by some of the large companies, which is the Infosys, the NTPCs, the ICICI banks uh, of the of the world, right? Which which are large um, uh, large cap companies in India, and uh, and so they need to spend a, a large amount, and they account for a large amount of the spend. And this, of course, I'm sure all of you know that uh, you know majority of the spend, um, you know, almost 50% is uh, you know across uh, education, skill development, uh, healthcare, and wash projects. Uh, that's where uh, you know a little over 50% of the total spend over the last three years. The good news is some of the other things, including women empowerment, um, you know, environment. Um, rural development, all of those, the spends are going up. Uh, the trend is that more more uh, corporates are looking outside of uh, these sectors to to meet their CSR spend commitments. Any any questions or comments? Okay. So, um, as per the Act, um, you know, um, the CSR uh, projects can be implemented directly by the company. They can be implemented through not-for-profit arm of one or more group companies. Companies can give grants directly to government schemes such as the Prime Minister's Relief Fund and, and things like that. Or those grants can be given to non-profit implementation partners. So that's the, uh, you know, that's the part that we're going to analyze a little bit more uh, in detail. Uh, and hence, I've highlighted that in blue again. Uh, and these grants, of course, can be given to a trust or a society or a Section 8 company. And as per the Act, they must have a track record of three years in undertaking similar programs for which the corporate wants to fund. Um, fund the nonprofit, so which which means that at least as per the Act, most companies that are wanting to spend uh, CSR their CSR budget to meet their two percent compliance and need to report compliance, uh, they would they would look at funding uh, nonprofit organizations that have a track record of at least three years. Again, um, you know, if there's any questions, uh, I'm happy to take them now or towards the end. So, so the from an implementation perspective, of course, uh, you know, uh, every company needs to set up a board. Uh, you know, the team for implementation uh, is either dedicated, as it was in Dell, which was a one-person team that was me, uh, and now somebody else has taken over that role uh, a month ago, or Oftentimes, in most corporates, they're part of one of these functions. They could be part of any other, but most commonly, I've you know, based on my interactions with several industry peers, they're part of either uh, marketing communications, HR, corporate affairs, or or legal. Team size depends on the mode of implementation. Typically, when the mode of implementation is via NGO partners. Uh, the team size is typically very, very small. You know, uh, when, when the company is implementing directly, then of course uh, they need more people. Um, also, you know, uh, companies uh, are not supposed to use their CSR funds for one-off events such as walks or marathons or uh, sponsorships of TV programs, awards. 
Uh, typically, they cannot be reported as part of CSR expenditure. Again, companies, some companies are strict. Dell was very, very strict uh, from a compliance to this uh, perspective. Um, but they could be supported under marketing or business budget, uh, but not uh, under uh, the CSR uh, budget of the organization. <laughs> so if you look at, you know, companies typically, you know, the Company Act has 11 broad uh, thematic areas uh, in that Schedule 7. Most companies typically have one to three thematic areas of focus. Um, the, the exception would be where somebody is looking to do a kind of, uh, you know, uh, a whole holistic transformation of a community or a village where then they could be addressing more than three thematic areas of focus which that's an approach that several uh, corporates especially the large corporates especially the large manufacturing units do where you know wherever their plants are located they look at some kind of a holistic development which includes education skilling um, you know, uh, environment, uh, uh, sanitation, um, and and uh, you know, just overall development. Uh, so so, but apart from that, when I look at typical corporates, um, they usually you know one to three thematic areas. Again, I go back to my, you know, I have experience only in Dell as a CSR head. Uh, we had only one thematic area, and that was basically what we called as Dell calls as youth learning, which is essentially education. Uh, that was the oh, that was the only uh, area in which Dell gave grants globally um, uh, in the last few years. Uh, over the, in the past, they've given grants in different areas, but they decided to fo uh, you know just concentrate on one area of focus. Um, and you know, thematic areas typically are aligned to the nature of the business. Uh, in the case of Dell, not only were we supporting education, but we were doing that not just through cash grants, but also through Dell products as grants. And as per the act, Dell products are not, uh, you know, any product donations cannot be counted as part of the two percent spend, but as I, like I mentioned, Dell, and there are several other large companies that have been giving uh, much before the act and have been giving both in cash and in kind. So the Dell, new Dell products are given to the grant partners as part of the program implementation. A lot of the, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, the thematic areas of focus uh, may align with government programs. You know, these are what I've named here are uh, central government programs. AIM is the Atle Innovation Mission, which runs the Atle, uh, you know, tinkering labs in schools and Atle incubation centers uh, in uh, universities and research uh, institutions. And, so there are uh, government programs uh, with which uh, you know a lot of corporates align their uh, giving or CSR uh, strategy. Uh, there are also you know state government priorities. For example, in Dell, our endeavor was to look at the states where we were working with to see that whatever we were trying to do in schools and government schools was aligned with. Uh, the state government in terms of its priorities uh, and uh, things like that. So, um, of course, uh, now uh, all of the corporates are aligned with the SDG goals, which are broad, but not only that, but specific targets for those goals and maybe even a specific set of indicators that they want to, uh, you know, track and measure. And so they choose their targets uh, based on those indicators. So, so for example, in in uh, Dell, you know, education being the focus, there were, uh, you know, uh, ten targets and seventeen indicators, of which we covered about three or four targets that we were very focused on. So, for example, vocational skilling was not for, you know, was part of the education goal, but not part of the Dell target. All. 
you know, all corporates use a due diligence process uh, to select uh, NGOs. Uh, they may use a published list from standard entities like GuideStar India or uh, Charities Aid uh, uh, Foundation India, or employ their own third party uh, wedding organization. Uh, you know, uh, so, so again, that varies from uh, company to company. There are also consultants now that help corporates uh, you know in the NGO selection process which, which they do custom due diligence uh, based on the corporates requirements so uh, but no corporate would really uh, you know of course give out any of their grants without going through one or the other kind of a due diligence uh, was there any question or comment Yes, Bhaskar. One question is from me and uh, the two questions. From, one is from Rina Saxena and another from Anisha. And I also okay. have put a question which I came across, you know, while uh, um, being associated with one of the NGOs, one of our chain makers, in fact. Yes. So if you can uh, uh, um, answer this now, maybe at later. It's up to you. Uh, I, I'm okay with that. I, mm -hmm. Are they on the chat window? I can just switch to the chat window. Yeah, I can uh, explain. I mean, can just take up this question, and uh, that also would do. I think. Yeah. Give it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to. No, you can just talk about. We can just. Uh, oh, you will. You explain. will talk yeah, yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, you can talk okay. about it. That's what I'm saying. Instead of a chat. Okay. So that. Okay. So, no, no, no. So, the, it's the question on the chat window. Is my. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I would read it, read it out for you. Yeah, so, because I'm just so, trying to figure okay, out where my chat yeah, is. Yeah, there, I, it I, is. there it is. Yeah, I will okay. read it out for you. No, no, no I got it. Question. Yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. question from Brina is that there is a MBA CSR course available, but the organization which runs or provides this course has trouble getting financial support from corporates. So do they see it differently? So how is it like? Why is this uh, indifference is her question? <laughs> See again, uh, you know. I think uh, I I have to go back and check whether uh, okay. you know supporting the MBA CSR is part of this CSR two percent CSR spend or not. Rina, have you checked that? Does it qualify? Is the first question. Sec second would be uh, you know again like I said um, one and I'll come to that a little bit towards later. I think one needs to look at you know the the focus area the you know the type of change type of work that the nonprofit is trying to do and then go through a fairly large list of um, you know nonprofits uh, sorry corporates to see what their areas of focus are and uh, you know all, as i'm going to just talk about uh, shortly almost all the co corporates have a well defined csr policy giving their areas of focus. It may be a little broad. Some of them are very specific, but those are typically available on the corporate's website. So again, um, you know, it, it, may be, it may be a little, um, you know, uh, prestigious to say that corporates are completely indifferent. I would just say that reaching out to the, uh, the right set of corporates uh, is, is probably a big challenge. Okay, uh, so another question is, uh, I think you mentioned about GuideStar India and another organization. Correct. So, yeah, so Rina said, I think you were asking that whether she has checked whether, uh, you know, does it come under CSR? She says she has not checked. So I think uh, maybe she would uh, get back to you maybe later when you have queries or something to email to them. Sure. Okay, so this question is from uh, Anisha saying that GuideStar India and which is that other organization uh, relating to... Yeah, so there are, I just took an example of two. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's another one called Charities Aid or, uh, Foundation. Mm -hmm. they're, they're again US based, but there's a CAF India, which operates out of Mumbai, has a presence in, in I'm sure, definitely in Delhi and Bangalore. Okay. And they actually help corporates, again, they do both. They, they help corporates identify non-profit implementation partners that meet the corporate's criteria. They also go out and do due, due diligence uh, of those non-profits and the ones that they do, they list on their uh, website. So that another corporate that wants to work with 
uh, uh, that nonprofit may or may, may not choose to go through the complete due diligence process themselves. Okay, okay. That's okay. A, a third example is, is, is a consulting technology and consulting organization called Good Era, which also uh, does vetting both on a custom basis, but once they do the vetting, due diligence, uh, you know, they, they actually then list those uh, on their uh, website for, uh, you know, and make them visible to other corporates. Uh, Good Era actually did the, uh, did the due diligence for the CSR uh, implementing, NG, you know, uh, nonprofit agencies for EMC India, which of course later became part of Dell uh, okay. after the acquisition a couple of years ago. Okay. Okay, so I think that answers your question, Anisha. So the uh, one question I have raised that is, is it a rule that a particular corporate, you know, under their CSR policy, that they can give funds or grants to a particular NGO, not more than three years? Like if they have, for example, if they are getting funds from Dell, okay, maybe a, for up to three years, maybe continuously, consecutively, or maybe later, but they cannot get again. So th there was a situation with a NGO which works in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So, is there a so, particular rule? No, no. So, Chitranjali, uh, is, that's that question is from Chitra, from you, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, no. As per the Act, there is no such restriction. Okay. Um, companies may, uh, for various reasons, decide to do that. Now, okay. if the company cited a, a, a statutory requirement, I don't believe that is correct. If you take Dell itself, we've been, uh, you know, giving to the same non-profits for 10 years now. Okay. You know, I, I said we st Dell started, I keep saying we, I'm not mm -hmm. part of Dell, so okay. <laughs> I left a couple of months ago. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, Dell started giving in 2007, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. They gave grants to a couple of non-profits, one of them. Actually, both of them received grants uh, in, in in the last set of grants that I gave uh, for the for the fiscal year 17-18. Uh, okay? okay, so that I administered. Rather. Okay, okay. So, so, so no, there is no uh, no rule. As no such. rule. In fact, I I will allude to a point where it becomes challenging for a new nonprofit to get funding from Dell because oh, okay. Dell's been. Uh, as an example, right? They uh -huh. see no reason to, you know, what you know, what could be the reasons for change for adding new nonprofits? Okay. Either either they are dissatisfied, and so they want to drop, okay. or there is a change in strategy and CSR policy. So, in, you know, in addition to or instead of education, to decide to do, for example, uh, fund, um, let's say, technology incubation. Right? Okay. And they would look at uh, adding startups in that area, right? Uh, and the and the uh, you know the third would be if there is an increase in budget, significant increase in budget. Right? Okay. So so okay. otherwise, uh, an organization like Dell is typically not looking for new nonprofits to to support as part of their CSR. Budget. CSR. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My next question was that. Now, say for example, you mentioned that there is a mandate that NGO should have worked, you know, for a period of minimum three years, and they have to give all the records, the financial and, and everything. They have to give the proof for as part of due diligence or for vetting the information. But suppose if there is an NGO who has started just newly, okay, he has worked for over a year or two, is doing a very good work. So is there any exception as part of CSR, you know, okay, a fund can be given or this particular NGO can be considered for it? No, so the three-year thing is part of the act, uh, Anjali. So that's part of the, it, you know, the way that act is worded, Hmm. Again, it depends on the company. It says, uh, you know, it, the organ, the implementing organization must have a three-year uh, track record of executing similar programs. Okay, so, so, uh, so the three-year requirement is not a company requirement. In fact, you know, my next slide talks about the fact that, uh, you know, I'm just quickly going to that that. The track record requirements may be even more stringent from company to company. For example, Dell actually requires a five-year track record. Okay, and HCL Foundation requires functional existence of ten years and work experience of five years, 
in the education and health categories they they typically you know invite applications from non profits in an open process on their website so this process is available and the criteria and you know for for education and health it's 5 years for environment it's slightly less i think it's 2 years work okay. experience of 2 years and existence of 5 years okay. so so again um you know which makes it challenging for newer um, uh, you know non profits there are there are two ways uh, that they could look at one is uh, to to part you know like rajesh mentioned right if an if a non profits doing something very innovative very unique um, you know uh, uh, let's say in the education space Uh, and in line with what dell is trying to do in terms of you know improving learning outcomes uh, then uh, you know it is quite possible that uh, an organization like dell will consider specifically supporting that ngo through one of the existing ngos to start with hmm right? okay so though, though i also make a point here that um, you know uh, that many corporates disallow sub granting that means they give grant to an ngo which in turn gives uh, you know part part of the grant to another ngo right okay many you know dell in principle doesn't allow that however again based on uh, you know the solution based on the you know the problem that the non profit is trying to solve um an organization like dell and i'm sure many others would make an exception of trying to you know you get around the rule uh, in, in this way but there has to be obviously some synergy i mean it cannot be it cannot be construed as where you're just channeling funds uh, to a particular non profit because the act doesn't allow it right correct okay yeah. so okay. so okay. so so i you know these are again uh, you know um, mncs like dell uh are driven by a lot of global guidelines like i mentioned youth learning education is where we give globally in 17 countries across the world okay so so each country has very limited scope to decide in which space they want to give there is some scope but it's very limited okay and a lot of mncs are driven that way and uh, you know they require additional due diligence uh, you know 501c3 is is how where charities in the us are registered so as part of their due diligence they want to make sure that the indian or any global charity that uh, they fund uh, has been deemed to be equivalent to that section uh, that they use these are i think uh, you know Uh, well known you know in terms of what registrations approvals are uh, are uh, required right okay. uh, the, the other thing is companies uh, hcl foundation is again another example uh, an hcl foundation i take up as it's an example of where there is a group uh, you know arm uh, you know that is actually implementing uh, but not directly but uh, through non profits for the group companies right for one or more group companies if set up a separate foundation that foundation then works with non profits right so so they have uh, for example a guideline for the size of the ngo in terms of you know the annual expenditure not necessarily in the in the in the area of work that they are looking to support but just the overall size of the ngo again they they, they believe that a certain minimum size is uh, required to be able to, and uh, you know part of the reason um why uh, companies do this is because like i mentioned dell and and many other companies though the actual grant agreement may be for a year but what they have in view is typically a multi year relationship and and companies like dell do not put a limit saying it's a 3 year or a 5 year i think they they are only looking to see how the program can improve how it can scale hence a lot of uh, let's say conditions or constraints are imposed up front so that you know it can result in a uh, in a long term relationship uh, so like, we have two more questions i think you continue with your presentation and maybe you can take it at the end so sure. yeah sure, sure. Yeah, I I should be done hopefully in another five minutes or so, yeah. uh, five to seven minutes. So so like I mentioned, most uh, corporates uh, disallow uh, sub granting. It means giving 
you know at least at least they want to be you know it needs to be part of the initial uh, discussion and there needs to be a very good reason uh, why uh, uh, you know they would want to fund a non profit in order for that to fund another non profit in turn right so of course see these are i i will quickly go through this but this is basically things that my experience you know um, yeah, you know corporates all corporates will typically look at i think the important thing is more and more corporates even as they start their csr activity want to define uh, you know the outcomes and the impact measures fairly up front uh, they of course as part of their due diligence want to make sure that past programs have been documented there are enough systems processes governance checks etc in place uh corporates may give geographic preferences uh, you know unfortunately uh, you know a lot of uh, city based uh, corporates uh, especially in bangalore want to have fund non profits uh, that are doing work in the vicinity of the office uh, mainly mainly to encourage employee volunteerism but again that is slowly but surely changing but there may be still preferences to give only to urban based or or uh, you know to rural for example hcl foundation again uh, has uh, very specific that they're looking at non profits they're working only in rural areas dell was a mix of uh, uh, started out 10 years ago with vicinity to office locations now is a mix of urban and rural you know we have funded for example non profits doing work with government schools in tribal areas in odisha where we don't even have an office in the state so <clears throat> uh corporates are looking you know whether because of the vicinity to the office locations or virtually they do want to you know look at programs that provide strong employee volunteering opportunities which could be in person or virtual uh you know with the improving infrastructure though not necessarily true in remote rural areas uh, uh, there are uh, you know com companies also want to capitalize on uh, virtual volunteering activities for their employees um again uh, talking from my experience both uh, at dell and in trying to raise funds uh preferences to spend uh, you know the funds on programmatic grants that means the focus on uh, delivery of services rather than on capital expenses personal development or capacity building which is less common however the the latter the the capacity building of non profits development of personal i think that's a big area of debate in the industry today and some corporates are now looking at doing that now now the challenge also is that not all of that can be counted as part of the 2% spend there are some constraints that the act lays out so the uh, the, the the act also encourages uh, spending more on programmatic uh, expenses rather than in capacity building of course uh, you know uh, for any work that you do you know the documentation systems processes or governance all of that is also important because any new corporate would wa would want to check uh, with other corporates in terms of their experience uh, of the program implementation so very quickly uh, like i said um, the csr policy uh, you know is typically published uh, on on companies websites um, you know a lot of them also talk about their existing csr program so i think i think that would be a good place to understand whether uh, you know the thematic areas align with the area of your uh, non profit um uh, this is the point that i was alluding to earlier many of the new economy startups whether it's an e-commerce payment services etc uh, are beginning to support csr projects even though they are not required to do so as per the company act um i've i've come across a few and that's mainly driven by the fact that a lot of the younger employees i mean just like a lot of you uh, who have been driven to be change makers yourself a lot of the younger uh, you know the millennial generation employees want to work for companies that from day one want to give back in some form so so companies are taking note of that and some of the progressive startups are uh, you know working on uh, csr projects through implementation partners even though 
the company may not yet require uh, the act may not require them to do that so you know my own experience uh, again uh, uh, being on the non profit side is you know when an ngo initiates sends out a mail uh, getting a face to face meeting uh, you know um, uh, can be a challenge as rajesh mentioned you know you know all of you guys have a good ecosystem with uh, with gap in terms of a lot of other um, partners experts mentors who may have connections into the uh, you know into the corporates that you believe align with are uh, doing work in alignment with the work that uh, you're doing um and so you know it'd be good to leverage that but if if you're just sending out a cold mail or a call it often is a challenge uh, to get to the right person and for that person to make the time uh, to 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 give a face to face meeting however when that happens i think uh, you know it should be used effectively in terms of you know making sure you do all the necessary groundwork in terms of understanding their objectives their csr programs spend a lot of time learning more about that and then telling how the work you do aligns with uh, you know what uh, they are trying to do as part of their csr programs and um, you know a couple of uh, don'ts which are i think uh, fairly common sensical but uh, you know you know it, it would be most effective unless you using an aggregator like give india or uh, uh, you know cap there are there are middle uh, men agencies you know this whole act has started off a whole slew of uh, you know uh, people getting into the act um, especially those of you who have applied for fcra will know that you know you keep getting calls and mails from various consultants saying they'll get it for you faster so so most corporates would prefer to deal directly with the with the with the ngo uh, and then of course uh, you know uh, if a corporate is imposing conditions to route a par portion of the fund to a specific person or entity unless it's part of a very specific program goal um and program definition i think that should also be avoided because that can impact the credibility of the of the non profit in the longer term and we've had before i went to dell we've had some issues of that kind uh, at dell itself so um, um so so uh, a bunch of uh, tips to conclude uh, you know directory listings industry forums conferences to identify potential corporates then go back to looking at uh, their policy their um, you know programs in a little bit more detail uh, given the fiscal cycle you know q4 mid q4 early q1 is when corporates are most open to considering new re programs either the end of the you know it can be any time in q4 one is either planning for next year uh, like companies uh, like dell do or you know they could it could be that they have inexhausted csr funds uh, for various reasons and so they need to spend it before march so that's that's again uh, you know a good time to uh, to you know touch base with corporates that may have Uh, you may have talked to before and they said no they don't have the funds at this point or they're not looking but you could go back and and if they were interested in your program in general then it is worthwhile going back to them uh, sometime early q4 uh, and then late q4 uh, you know for the for the following year um, the decision cycle uh, you know can be anywhere from 3 to 6 months so you know patience and prudent follow up is certainly required to short term uh, you know getting get, getting the funds uh, for a new non profits uh, is is going to be quite challenging uh, of course they expect uh, you know the responsiveness to queries to be very timely and specific that will reduce the uh, decision cycle time in turn um, and then uh, Uh, you know as part of the due diligence but i have put it here specifically but you know if if there are challenges if there are uh, you know um um uh, things in the past uh, in terms of delivery tracking and monitoring i think it it's good to be transparent rather than uh, for the uh, you know for the corporate to 
discover that uh, either as part of their due diligence or uh, uh, you know during the actual program execution um, corporates you know do want to tune some of the uh, you know programs if it meets let's say 70 80% of the requirement they may bring in some changes in line with some of their other programs some of their overall policy and so the nonprofit uh, should be flexible in terms of uh, you know program design and implementation for example uh, in in my own case uh, as part of geeta krishnamurthy trust uh, you know I've been in discussions with microsoft research which wants to fund, you know we were looking for them to fund they they were open to capital expenses but and we were looking at some building uh, etc that to extend classrooms but they completely refused to do that but they said anything that involved technology and so so they ended up funding our uh, the science lab that we set up in the school uh, so so that funding came from the corporate uh, after the entire due diligence process but but if we had said we want only uh, you know funds for the building and nothing else then you know uh, microsoft was not willing to do that um i i you know once you have a, you know a corporate that you think or a set of corporates i think it helps to build networks not just with the csr head but at multiple levels uh you know leadership employee volunteers um high volume of employee volunteering can be a precursor to corporate grants you know many corporates have schemes where they allow uh, volunteers to donate uh you know a certain amount that they earn through volunteering to an ngo of their choice and if they find that a lot of employees are supporting uh, a set of ngos then they would consider looking at it for a larger corporate grant and the same thing applies to giving you know with corporate match if a lot of employees are giving to a particular ngo for for the corporate match program then again Uh, you know the corporate may look at the programs that that ngo runs to see if uh, it fits in with their overall uh, strategy and policy and uh, becomes a candidate for uh, their csr grants um openness to collaborate with other ngos uh, social enterprises again you know is something that uh, uh, upfront if you express uh then it uh, then it works well for example in the case of dell since we're in education using technology lot of the dell grantees were were trying to build content uh you know that could be used for training teachers for training uh, for teaching uh, government school children dell felt that the better use of the funds was to look at who is doing the best content and then have the others just use that again not easy just as in um in the corporate world in the social uh, sector as well my own experience the not invented here syndrome is definitely there and everybody wants to do what uh, you know they think is uh, is the best um and then uh, you know um uh, the the utilization of requested grants how it is proposed to be utilized uh, needs to be uh specified unambiguously some corporates like dell had a specific format others may not have a specific format in which you when you apply for grants you specify how you utilize the grants and if it's not stated clearly ambiguously and several things are clubbed uh, under certain heads then uh, you know that could again uh, result in a challenge later on um uh, and uh, of course if uh, you know uh, there is a program that few corporates together are going to co-fund um, you know that means you it's the same program for which you have received funding from one corporate but you want additional funding from another uh, it's it's better to be clear about uh, you know the utilization and the impact from each of the co-founders co-funders yeah and uh, it's also good to have up front some kind of a path to sustainability of the program or the project this is not something that's common but uh, corporates like tel and several others are now starting to insist on that as part of the application process let's say we fund for 3 5 7 years what happens after that will the program be uh, you know sustainable or, or will the need for the program go away right? and last uh, you know um 
again i alluded to this earlier you know corporates with mature established csr programs like dell are less open to adding a new ngo program unless there's a change in the strategy or policy or 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 budget right um corporate setting up new csr programs however and including the new economy startups that i spoke about are are are, are a good bet uh, to to tap uh, the csr funds so so i stop there um, and um, will now be happy to take questions my uh, contact information is uh, is given here for anybody who wants to reach out to me yeah yeah that's great that's great yeah wonderful session so we have quite a few questions here uh bhaskar yeah. so i think one of the questions i believe you have already answered it so like i would just combine these two questions so one of the question was if csr grants are mostly meant for well experienced ngos how an early stage ngos would survive like you know what do the startups and you know all these people should do yeah i mean like i said it is it is a dichotomy um mm -hmm. and uh, the the you know i think i i i think the the, the reason uh, i i think uh, or the rationale behind it is typically because india has as we know uh, a huge number of non profits uh, you know i've heard numbers like 1.3 million mm -hmm. and not all of them are supposedly doing genuine work right exactly. and and the funds are not being used so i think the government um, you know to kind of ensure that the funds are you, you know utilized properly given to the right channels put in the three year i mean nobody has told me this but this is my working of the rationale right mm. why is there but i completely understand uh, mm. and 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 so the only way is so there are two ways one is startups like i said which are not complying which are not necessarily uh, you know doing this to comply with the act um you know and they may be much more open to a smaller organization that is uh, you know uh, doing something innovative that's uh, to solve a particular problem as long okay. as it aligns with the area that they are looking at i think that's one the other mm -hmm. is to par partner with other uh, larger non profits i mean okay. i can think of only only such to it okay of course of course you know we are talking about tapping corporate csr funds Uh, uh the three year limitation is part of the part of the three year restriction act is part is of the csr act. act but if you go outside of the act you can tap the funds or you can tap from the other sources exactly I mean, as you mentioned you know, about something with the volunteers like employees you know they come as volunteer if they start donating so company can maybe interested yes. in that ngo so that could be yeah. one of the way as somebody just asked if somebody doesn't have the three year record if they are early no i think this could be one of the gateway to you know get into the csr that could be that could be i mean which which also it, it takes some time uh, because you'll have to build relationship with at correct, multiple correct. levels depending on how volunteering is being driven you know some companies do it centrally through a dedicated team some companies like dell it's 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 distributed each site has hmm. has a csr committee these are hmm. volunteers uh, you know they're not full time in csr But they are the ones that determine which uh, non-profits to volunteer with. Right, exactly. Okay. So quickly moving on to the next question. So somebody just asked the common mistakes uh, done by NGO to get grants. So I think you mentioned it in do's and don'ts. So yes. I think yes. something yes. that answers your questions there. We will share the slide as well so that you know, can go back to that detail. And another question is by Yasin Khan. I think he has. Uh, they have asked two questions from Manipur. So one is, uh, uh, so it's easy for an NGO working in, in metro, you know, to get access to the CSR. But what about the remote ones? So where they mentioned that least amount of CSR fund uh, goes to northeast states, uh, like Manipur, Mizoram, and all these, you know, seven uh, sister states, eight northeast states. So is there any particular corporate, you uh, know, in your knowledge, like in which you know? which uh, particularly gives csr grants to education sector in these northeast states so i think i think that's a good question and that's a very valid point i mean the data on the csr portal clearly shows mm -hmm. that uh, the northeast states um, receive less funding compared to the rest of the country however the trend seems to be that now like i said even corporates like dell are willing to look at remote areas 
and so uh, and so i think that is that is uh, that is slowly but surely increasing now are there you know we'll have to look at uh, corporates uh, your to, to to specifically for the education sector it would probably uh, you know make sense to start with corporates that are based in the east right mm -hmm. uh, to start with right okay. uh, and and look at those that are focused on education and then try and uh, you know get through to them and present uh, the work that one is doing um but this is you know uh, this is a valid point and i i uh, you know one has to keep trying using some of the pointers and this is not obviously an exhaustive list of pointers i'm i'm no my, by no means an expert on the topic uh, but uh, but hopefully this will help um, you know uh, you think in certain uh, directions uh, towards uh, you know reaching out to more corporates correct correct okay so one more question is like most of the csr funds you know we believe that you know it goes uh, under utilized so and my query is also what what does happen to this a company is not able to utilize entire 2% of their fund okay most of the time so what what happens to those fund is there any quick thing you know that they can you know disburse it in some way or or does it lies with company or do they have to pay it as a tax no, or something so, so i think the company act is also morphing based on the experience i think there is some discussion going on right now Okay. in terms of uh, you know um how to, how to address the unspent amount so far if companies don't meet the 2% compliance then they had to state it in their report to the ministry of corporate affairs uh, explaining why they were not able to do that and i think the mca took because it was something new that was rolled out from 14 15 i think the last 2 3 years the ministry of corporate affairs has taken a fairly lenient stand sense because companies do take time to set up you know a, a csr board define the csr policy and then uh, and then spend the funds uh, i think moving forward they're going to be a little more strict and they're going to mandate spending that within the fiscal year now uh, now what some of the companies that have not been able to identify programs have done is to write a check to one of the government schemes like the prime okay. minister relief fund relief right plan. okay so to to meet the 2% uh, uh, requirement which uh -huh. some companies say you know they don't want to be on the list of uh, companies that are not meeting that they have been writing that but okay. like i said you know uh, if 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 from the short list of corporates that may be um, you know um uh interested in the work you do if you've already reached out to them once and they said they don't have budget or the budget is already committed it might be worthwhile getting back to them uh, you know towards the end uh, let's say early part of q4 to see if they have any funds left it okay. could be because some you know some other corporate was not able to absorb the entire grant or i mean some other non profit or things changed and they may or or even it's possible that their 2% spend requirement went up after their company's audited uh, financials became uh, finalized in the september time frame okay okay so, so okay uh, so another question is as you were saying about this uh, csr policy so is it uh, mandatory for all companies to publicly publish their csr policy uh, you know i i think the act talks about it i you know again the wording is it's whether is it statutorily mandated i mean the the company does say that uh, mm -hmm. the csr policy needs to be formulated and and uh, you know made public 